Well, it's week 40 and we're on day six. To finish out this week's reading, we're again going to read a passage from each of the four Gospels. In Matthew, we're going to read chapter 4, the first 22 verses, and then we'll skip to chapter 13, verses 54 through 58, just a few short verses. In Mark, we're going to read chapter 1, 12 through 20, and then chapter 6, 1 through 6. In Luke, chapter 4, 1 through 30, and chapter 5, 1 through 11. And in John, yes, in John, chapter 1, verses 35 through chapter 2, verse 12. Now, I know there's a lot of jumping around, but remember that while the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Luke, and Matthew, Mark, and Luke, uh, have a lot of commonality and even order to their stories, it isn't always in the exact same order. And so there'll be a little bit of jumping around in the Gospels rather than starting on chapter one and going through chronologically. John, we will catch up as John's stories have some correlation between the events that are found in the Synoptic Gospels. So yeah, a little bit of jumping around. Just be prepared to flip those pages and you'll just be fine. Well, today we're going to look at three primary events that are going on. The first is Jesus' temptation in the wilderness. After he is baptized, the Holy Spirit immediately, according to Mark, Mark loves that word, immediately, immediately the Holy Spirit leads Jesus into the wilderness. He spends 40 days and nights there. We don't know exactly what he was doing, but we anticipate that this was a time of preparation for him to begin the ministry that was about to take uh, force in the world. But at the end of those 40 days, hungry and thirsty because he hasn't eaten or drank, drinking anything, Satan comes to him. Now, Satan could be a proper name or it could just mean the adversary. Uh, but even so, the adversary of God comes to the Son of God and tries to tempt him into easy ways of demonstrating who he is and accomplishing what he's been sent to do. Now, the easy way is not always the best way, and Jesus is able to refute him with with, uh, Scripture. But here, we also see a parallel between the Old Testament story of the Israelites who were in the wilderness. When the Israelites were in the wilderness, when they were tempted, when they were hungry, when they were thirsty, rather than believing and trusting in God, they often failed. As a result, God would send them manna so that they would no longer be hungry. But when it came to worshiping God, more often they tested God than trusted God. And here we see that Jesus reverses that event, overcoming the temptation that Satan sets before him. Another event that we see in these uh, passages is Jesus calling the first disciples. Now, what's interesting is that rabbis at that time, and Jesus is often referred to as a rabbi uh, by his disciples, by others, is that rabbis might sort of set up their tent, if you will, in the courtyards of the temple, and then they would wait for students to come to them and say, we want to be your students. Jesus has a much uh, more uh, uh, forceful uh, or... um, (laughs) forgetting what the word I want to use. He has a more forthright uh, way of doing this. First of all, he doesn't go to the temple. He stays up in the Galilee region. And secondly, he seeks out his disciples. And it says that he goes up onto the mountain and prays overnight that he might make those right choices. And the next day he calls the 12. And as we see in the rest of these uh, passages today, the beginning of Jesus' ministry in Galilee, we see this group of 12 very different kind of men. There are fishermen, there's a zealot in there, uh, just all sorts of different, a a former tax collector, very different kinds of men who have been called by Jesus. Presumably they have something in common, but as of yet, here at the very beginning of the ministry, what seems to have the most commonality among them is their surprise by Jesus's ability, by the miracles that he's able to work. And not only that, They're in the process for themselves of discovering Jesus' identity. And the story, the early story found in the Gospels is just as much about the disciples discovering who Jesus is as it is Jesus revealing himself to everybody to know that he is the Savior. I know that for a lot of you, reading the Gospels is going to be, hmm, I've read these a million times before. I've heard them in worship. We've looked at them in Sunday school. But try to look at them, perhaps for 
uh, the first time with a new perspective. How would you have viewed Jesus if you were a disciple and this was the first time you were encountering these events? My prayer for you is that this reading would be fresh and new and exciting as we journey into the discovery of who Jesus is, not just for us, but for all the world.